Have you ever thought about prospecting in Arizona? Have you ever thought about finding some gold there? Well, hey, Arizona is a great place to look for gold and a lot of guys and gals have found large amounts of gold and done really well there. So Arizona is a great place to go. You want to find out more? You want to find out where to go to find gold in Arizona? That's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Chris Ralph and I'm the professional prospector and I do videos on gold and gemstones and stuff and we're going to talk about Arizona, where to find gold there. Now Arizona is a really popular place. Um, there's lots of load and placer districts and uh, there's a lot of people that go there. It's really popular wintertime destination for prospectors. I mean, you don't want to go prospecting in Arizona in July and August because most of Arizona is going to be really hot. And the guys who do live there and do prospect in the summer, they go out before the crack of dawn and get out there and just, you know, as dawn's coming up, they do their prospecting while the weather's still cool. And then they, you know, as soon as it gets too hot, they hightail it back home and, and call it a day. So it's a snowbird heaven. People come there in the, the winter time because actually it's very pleasant. I've been there in, in the, the cooler months of the year and it usually is very nice. Now, the methods that are most popular there are metal detecting and dry washing, but there's some water in some creeks that you could do panning or sniping, maybe even a little sluicing, mostly panning and sniping. There have been people who've dredged there and stuff, but really the bulk of the detecting is done dry, either dry washing or metal detecting. Then there are 87 known placer districts in Arizona that have been estimated to produce over 560 ounce, I'm sorry, 560,000 ounces of gold. Now you might say, well, 560,000, that's a lot. But among the 13 Western US states that have gold, Arizona is actually tied for 10th with New Mexico. There's nine other states that have done much better. The state of California literally has districts like the LaPorte district that have produced six times more gold in one district than the whole state of Arizona combined. But still, there's a lot of good places to go in Arizona. A lot of the gold is nuggety and so it's good for metal detecting and dry washing. A lot of the gold is... Uh, you know, in little areas that haven't been hammered and haven't been the subject of big commercial operations. The big places in California and Alaska and elsewhere that have really produced huge amounts of gold are mostly places that have been mined commercially and, and you have a big commercial operation that produces big quantities of gold. But with Arizona, it's more little small ravines and, and other places. There's been a few big operations in, in Arizona, no doubt, but the really big things, yeah, there's not that many. Usually it was small itinerant prospectors that were out there with their dry washers and of course in more modern times out there with their metal detectors, that those are the ones that were the most successful in finding gold. Now Arizona has produced a lot of gold and actually the load mines, the hard rock mines, have produced a lot more gold than the placer operations. In fact, way more gold. And now some of that has from, been from the, as a byproduct from the big copper mines because actually Arizona is famous for big copper mines, big open pit copper mines that have been in production for more than a century, some of them. And those mines produce just tremendous amounts of metal and they produce a little bit of gold along with the copper and a little bit of silver, a little bit of some other metals too. But the big production is copper, but because they produce so much copper, there's actually a byproduct amount of gold that's pretty significant. Now, of course, there's hard rock gold mines there that uh, have been very productive too, but uh, a lot of the hard rock gold, a fair amount, has come from the byproduct of copper mining. But the load mines are good places to go for metal detectors because if you're looking at little hard rock gold mines, uh, a lot of times the miners may accidentally throw out a few pieces that are 
pretty good. I've never done that in Arizona, but I know people who've done it and had success, and I've done it here in Nevada and had success. So it's a good idea to check out those load mines. They're worth looking at. Now, there were many dangers of prospecting in Arizona in the early days. In the 1850s, you know, there were a few prospectors, mostly in the Dome District, where rich placers were discovered. And, uh, but by 1858 and later, uh, prospectors from California that had come to Arizona, either with the military or for other reasons, started making some rich finds. And... Uh, some really super rich finds were found in the Yuma era, area and at La Paz. And from 1862 to 1870, a lot of other placer areas were found that were really rich, including uh, Weaverville, Rich Hill, Lynx Creek, the Walker area, and even the Hacienda River area. Groom Creek, Big Bug, and there's several other places in the Bradshaw Range, all of which became really big placer producers in that 1860s, 1870s kind of time frame. Now, in Arizona is a kind of a unique thing. Not all of the state is a good place to look for gold. In fact, only about two thirds of the state is good for looking for gold. The other third or plus is, it's maybe 60, 40. The other part is a terrible place to look for gold. It just, if you look at the history of it and where gold's been found, which I'll show you in just a minute, you'll see that it's really not such a great place. So let's take a look at the state of Arizona geologic map and see if we can figure out why part of the state is great and part of the state, not so much of a good place to look. This is a geologic map of the whole state of Arizona. And one of the things that you can see just looking at it right off is that the north and northeast part looks a lot different than the south and southwest parts. The north northeast part, which is mostly, at least in this map, blues and greens and some bright yellow, uh, those basically are signifying, at least in this map anyway, sedimentary rocks like sandstone and limestone and that sort of thing that really are not good places to search for gold. The south and southwest part, you can see, uh, basically consists of a number of ranges and, and a lot of different other colored rocks. And these are basically volcanic and metamorphic rocks that, for the most part, are underneath those sedimentary rocks like the limestone and the sandstone that I just mentioned. And so the rocks underneath are the ones that are older and have the greater potential for gold. And the sedimentary rocks, yeah, not so much. Now let's look at a map of the gold deposits of Arizona. And this is both placer and hard rock. And, and it shows that it matches the geologic map perfectly. So here you can see all the gold mines that uh, have been productive in the state of Arizona, all marked on there by a little yellow dot. And you can see that it corresponds just exactly as the geologic map showed. The south and southwestern part of the state have lots of gold mines, especially there, a big clump in the middle around Yavapai County. And then the north and northeast part of the state of Arizona, there's virtually nothing there except one very small yellow dot in the middle at the top. I don't know what that is. But in any case, the bulk of the production and virtually all the production came from the south and southwest part of the state. Now, as I mentioned, Arizona has 87 placer districts that have recorded production of placer gold. Now, there's places scattered through here that don't have any recorded place or any per recorded production, and they may not be on this list. But we're going to take a look at some of the more popular, some of the better known areas, some of these districts, and we're going to break it up by county. And one of the things that I want to just mention, even before we get started, is a district, especially in Arizona, can be variable in size. Don't think of it as like, well, here's a dot on the map and maybe for a half a mile around there, there may be gold. No, this may, a district may be a mountain range and you may find gold up and down that range for 20 miles. And so you got to think of it in a bigger scale. And some of them are small, like I mentioned, but others of them, like I say, pick up a whole mountain range. 
So districts are a variable thing in size. Now in looking at all these different districts in Arizona, we're going to kind of go through it on a county by county basis. We're going to use a book uh, by Maureen Johnson called The Gold Placers of Arizona. Let's take a look at that. So this is the reference book that most guys used in Arizona. Placer Gold Deposits of Arizona by Maureen Johnson. Now you can buy this in a bunch of places. You want to buy a paper copy, great, no problem. Uh, a lot of guys have them for sale. A lot of uh, dealers have them for sale. But you can also download a free copy, a free e-copy. And I will put a link to that in the description below this video. So if you're interested in downloading a copy, check out uh, the description and you'll see the link for it. And we're actually going to use her map too. We're going to start with Mojave County. Let's take a look at Mojave County. Now, as I mentioned, this is the map from the Maureen Johnson book, and I have a link to the book down below, but I'm also going to put a link to the map, to the whole map. But we're going to start by looking at Mojave County. Now, Mojave County is a popular area, and a lot of Arizona prospectors really like Mojave County as a place to go, and we're going to talk about some of the more important areas in the county. The uh, Shemi Shuvis, I'm probably mispronouncing that name, I'm sure. It's also called the Gold Wing or the Mojave Mountains District. It's number 27 on Maureen Johnson's map. It is an area down near the Colorado River. Uh, you have to be careful to stay off of any private property or any uh, noted uh, BLM, you know, recreation areas and that kind of stuff where you're not allowed to prospect. But this is an area I want to point out uh, closely associated with uh, Precambrian metamorphic rocks, uh, that is, schist. And uh, on the geologic map, and I'll also put a link to the geologic map of Arizona, you can look that all over this area of Mojave and Yavapai and some of the other counties, uh, this a Precambrian metamorphic rock is associated with veins that have gold in them. Now, that doesn't mean that every place on the map that shows that Precambrian metamorphic is automatically going to have loads of gold, but there are areas out there in Mojave County that have not been worked by other prospectors, and it's this metamorphic rock, and I've actually talked to some of them uh, in the Black Mountains, I know a guy who went over there, and it's not shown as having any placer, but he focused on those areas of shish, and I know he found some mighty nice nuggets. So keep in mind that any place that the geologic map shows XM, for, and the X is for Precambrian, and the M is for Metamorphic, it's a shish in most cases, that those places at least have a potential to have gold. And the Goldwing area down there, number 27, is definitely one of those. The next one I want to talk about is uh, on her map number 28. That's the Oatman area. And Oatman, you know, there's been placers uh, here and there throughout that. And uh, again, uh, in some places um, associated with the veins there at Oatman. But Oatman has not been a real huge placer producer uh, but still there's potential and and most of the most of the gold that was produced in the Oatman area was very fine gold associated with some of the veins that are there the next area is number 29 that's the Kingman area and uh, Kingman has produced some very nice nuggets and it's not well known but the a lot of the ground is is claimed and that sort of thing uh, it has another characteristic, you know, I mentioned the Precambrian metamorphic, another characteristic of you'll find in a number of placers in Arizona is that uh, porphyritic copper deposits, because there was a big copper open pit at Kingman, um, are often have with them associated veinlets on the outskirts of the district. And some of these veins can produce some nice placer gold. Uh, that's true in a couple districts in 
uh, Nevada. It's true in a number of districts in Arizona. In Utah, you know, the most productive placer area in all of Utah was Bingham Canyon, which where they have a, a giant copper porphyry. So associated with copper porphyries are sometimes some nice gold. Uh, number 30 is down on the Colorado River, and yes, they did find some nice gold there, but pretty much all of that is within the recreation area, and if you get caught there, um, you'll find that you're in loads of trouble. So you don't want to be prospecting in that area. Now, number 31, which is the uh, King Tut, Gold Basin, Mead View kind of area, uh, that area has produced some really nice gold for a lot of prospectors armed with both metal detectors and with dry washers. And it's very extensive. And again, it's closely associated with that XM or Precambrian metamorphic shished. Uh, that's, that's where the gold is. And it's been very productive. I've seen some big nuggets and some very nice gold come from that. So that kind of sums up the most important and productive districts in Mojave County. Next, let's take a look at La Paz and Yuma counties and the gold deposits there. Now, before I get started here, I want to mention that La Paz and Yuma are two counties now, but when Maureen Johnson wrote her book, they were only one county. It was only Yuma. Uh, she wrote her book in the late 1960s, and uh, the La Paz County was split off the north end of Yuma in 1983. And so obviously her book is just going to call the whole area Yuma because that's what it was when it was written. So looking at La Paz and Yuma, uh, we'll start with the southern part closer to Yuma. And there you have the uh, Gila City or Dome District. And that area, there's a number of placers around there. That was a very productive area, one of the more productive areas. And it may not get quite as much popularity as some other areas in Arizona. Again, this whole area, uh, be it the uh, Dome or the uh, Laguna or the uh, Muggins Mountain areas, those are all associated with the XM, with the uh, uh, Precambrian schist rock that's shown on the, the geologic map. This is also true for the districts marked 81, 82, 83, and 84, which is the Cocopa, Fortuna, La Posa, and Mohawk district. These are all areas, again, where that rock, the, the Precambrian schist marked as XM on the geologic map is exposed. And, you know, it's not surprising that where that rock is exposed, there's been some placer production. And to tell you the truth, I'm sure a lot of those areas have been little explored with metal detectors and have some real potential. That whole area around Dome, both to the north with Laguna and Muggins and to the south as well, uh, I think all that area has some real potential. Moving north, we come to uh, what's marked as placer number 73. It's the Tank Mountains. This is another placer associated with the uh, Precambrian metamorphic schist at marked XM on the geologic map. And then continuing on north, we come to the area around Quartzite. Now, Quartzite is a super popular snowbird area. People come from all over the country in cold regions to spend winters around Quartzite. They have a huge rockhound show that lasts for weeks and weeks and it's just an interesting area that a lot of people like to visit to go prospecting. Years ago I had a friend who uh, took his metal detector out there and had, found a four ounce nugget. So there's some really nice gold to be found out in that area but I've also seen people dry washing just as well. But let's go through the uh, three areas that generally lie a little bit south of Quartzite that are important placer producers. The first of these is the La Paz district and I'm told that some of this is now included and uh, maybe even a lot of it is now included in a, a, an expansion or a redoing of an Indian reservation that uh, in the past was to the north. Uh, but historically La Paz was a huge producer. 
The next one, uh, marked as 78 on the map, is the group of, of placers called La Choya, Middle Camp, and Orofino. And these were also, uh, they remain to be very popular. They're generally south of Quartzite and located on the east side of the Dome Rock Mountains. Finally, the Plumosa district area, uh, located on the west side of the Plumosa Mountains, has also been very productive. Uh, all of these districts that are south of Quartzite spread out over a long ways. This is not just areas where uh, one or two little ravines have uh, yielded gold. It's a number of mountain ranges and the gold is widespread over large areas. There's a lot of claims out here, but there's also a lot of club claims as, as well. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the ways to get started if you don't already have claims or know people is to join a club and become part of that. So that's it for Yuma and La Paz counties. Next, we'll take a look at Maricopa, Pinal, and Gila County. So Maricopa is the county that uh, Phoenix is located in, and of course a big population center for the state there. Uh, the principal areas of placer mining in Maricopa County would be the San Domingo, which is marked as 19 on the map, the uh, Vulture area, which is marked as 18, and Bighorn, which is marked as 17. Um, all of these maps are, or all of these districts are related to, again, the uh, uh, Precambrian schist and outcrops of related rocks. Um, sometimes on the map you'll see in, in this area uh, a XMS instead of just XM. And XM is undivided uh, metamorphic rocks, Precambrian, Precambrian age, whereas XMS is divided to Precambrian metasedimentary rocks, which includes schist. And then what you get is the, the geologic map is a composite map. Uh, made by work by different people and maybe one a geologist doesn't divide out to different kinds of Precambrian metamorphic rocks and another guy does and so you get slightly different markings but for intents and purposes the XMS and the XM schist are pretty much the same thing so again the uh, San Domingo area is very popular and certainly produces a lot of gold. It's easily accessed from Morristown and some of the areas around there. Uh, the Vulture area is also not far from there, not far from Wickenburg, and I know has produced uh, small nuggets for uh, metal detectorists. And then the Bighorn, again, is a little further out there, but also uh, an interesting area for metal detecting. Uh, finally, the last district for... Mar Maricopa that I'm going to go over is the Cave Creek District marked as number 20 on the map and again this is a area where you have the XMS and XMV. XMS is uh, Precambrian Metasedimentary and the uh, XMV is Precambrian uh, Metavolcanic Rocks. Uh, this is basically more greenstones, but for most people, this can end up looking a lot like schist anyway. And I have actually found a gold in Arizona in the metavolcanic rocks too, the Precambrian metavolcanic. So it's also an interesting area to take a look at. For Pinal County, uh, the only one we're going to take in of note is going to be the old hat uh, Canada del Oro area, which is really a lot closer to Tucson than it is to some of the other population centers and but it was a productive area and it's uh, located uh, a comparatively short distance north of Tucson. For Gila County um, we'll take a look at Payson, Globe and Dripping Springs and uh, the, uh, the Globe Miami district has been productive it's another one of these that I mentioned earlier that's associated in the general vicinity of the big copper porphyry mines. 
Uh, Globe was noted for its uh, big mining operation. I think they still have some copper mining that goes on there. And on the per periphery of some of these districts, like I say, there's little veinlets. It's not unusual to have silver base metal or gold and even veins that yield placers in the area around these, these big copper porphyry districts. Payson has a, a significant area that it's produced some gold and uh, it, a lot of it was from near a mine called the Oxbow Mine but there was an area around there that produced uh, placer gravels and then also the Dripping Springs area where placer gold has been found uh, for a fairly large area on the southwest and northeast flanks of the Dripping Springs Mountains. Okay, let's take a look now at Yavapai County. Now, Yavapai is uh, kind of the heart of placer mining in Arizona. There's a huge area here that's part of the Bradshaw Mountains, and, and there's uh, numerous outcrops of the uh, Precambrian, either metavolcanic or um, meta uh, sedimentary or just uh, you know undivided XMS and it's all this this is why that rock is in many places called the Yavapai Shisht and it's gold bearing and there's a huge number of districts here and they're much bigger than the map would imply I mean I can just read them off the Lynx Creek drainage the Hacienda River drainage Big Bug Creek drainage Turkey Creek drainage, Black Canyon drainage, Humboldt Creek drainage, the Weaver and Rich Hill area, Kirkland area, Copper Basin area, and Granite Creek area. And all of these are widespread and have basically numerous little tributaries that add gold to the, the whole drainage area and many prospectors have been very successful going up little side creek drainages especially ones that drain these uh, Precambrian metamorphic rocks and and you know have good luck with them and there's many little districts with names and and a lot of like I say little creeks and areas and drainages that people have worked and found surprising amounts of gold. I know people who have found some nice pockets in here. I know people who have found good sized nuggets in this area. Uh, I know people who've had a lot of luck. And so uh, this is another area where you can take your geologic map and look at it and see and take a topographic map and look at it and see and try to find those areas that are draining the right kinds of rocks, the favorable hosts for, for gold and you know take your metal detector your dry washer your pan or whatever up there and do uh, do some prospecting and see what you can find because there are small tributaries here that, that may never have been worked if, especially if you have to hike back in a ways to get to them uh, the last district uh, that we're going to talk about for Yavapai is Baghdad and it's way over in the western part of the county it's marked as number 65 on the map and this also is another area that's closely associated with that Precambrian metamorphic rock and so again understanding what that kind of rock looks like and knowing how to read a geologic map and a topo map you know you can do pretty well putting yourself in areas with good potential now of course not every area that has this kind of rock is going to instantly be productive for gold. Of, of course not. Uh, the rock outcrops all over the place in a lot of areas and not every single area has gold. But there's many of them that do and if you're in an area working this kind of rock you're in an area that certainly has potential. Next we'll take a look at Pima and Santa Cruz, the Tucson area. Well, by far the greatest producer in uh, Pima County has been the Greaterville district. Greaterville has been a really great producer over the years and I know a lot of guys who found really big nuggets at Greaterville and I'm talking stuff like 10 ounces and more. So the really large nuggets come from this area and it's spread over a large region. It's not just one or two little drainages. The Greaterville area has a lot of uh, a lot of good potential to offer to the prospector. 
Also the Arabica district that's also been very productive and also extends over a large area. And finally uh, Sierrita Mountains, uh, that area also is fairly large and extends over a large area and has been productive to prospectors. As far as Santa Cruz, the Oro Blanco, I've hunted in the Oro Blanco district and it extends actually right on down to the Mexican border. And you know, if you get down there too close to the border, gotta watch yourself, make sure because some not so great stuff happens down there. Um, Nogales, uh, Patagonia, and the Tyndale Harshaw area has also been productive as well. So this whole area around Tucson has been quite productive and is of great interest to the prospector. And there's a number of clubs down here in the Tucson area as well. And finally, we'll take a look at Cochise, Graham, and Greenlee counties. These are lesser productive uh, counties, but still there's some gold there that you might be interested in. So the most important uh, placer in Cochise County is the Dos Cabezas district. And here, uh, a number of drainages and uh, ravines that drain both the north and the south flank of the Dos Cabezas Mountains have been found to contain gold. And a number of uh, people have worked this area and there's been some good gold found here and it's historically been a decent producer, a good solid producer. As far as uh, Graham and Greenlee counties, the biggest producer has been the Morency district. This is another another placer district closely associated with a large uh, copper porphyry deposit. Morency has been worked for copper for many, many years. And again, these uh, placers are kind of in the periphery in a number of streams that are nearby and close to the main body of copper ore there. And then downstream, the San Francisco River, this is a, another placer area, and gold here occurs on benches and in old river gravels along the San Francisco River. Now, Arizona is a great place to go prospect, and there's lots of clubs there, lots of locations, and I know a lot of people who found some nice gold there. I found some nice gold in Arizona on some of the trips that I made down there. But there are loads of claims there, um, both by individuals and by clubs and other people, and so, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard for a new prospector to figure everything out. And so what I recommend to you, if you're a new prospector, you don't live in Arizona and have lots of friends and that kind of stuff, you're experienced and you know Arizona like the back of your hand. You don't need, you don't need uh, advice from me. But if you're a new guy getting started or a new gal, uh, take a look at joining a club. There's a lot of really good clubs, the Roadrunners and some others. You can use Google to search for prospecting clubs in my area, you know, and, and you know, put in what city you're in. And look at that and look at joining a club. A lot of these clubs have claims. You can go out on the club claims and explore around there and find some very nice gold. It's, they're usually inexpensive to join. At least they're not that expensive. And it's a great way to get started, to get to know some local people in the area that have had success finding gold. And a lot of times, you know, the guys in the clubs are, are friendly, they're helpful and you get a new guy in there and they'll give you some advice and some input and suggestions of what works in your area. Now the other thing, if you're looking to get into prospecting and finding gold in Arizona, or maybe Arizona and some other places too, prospecting and finding gold is a skill. It's something you need to know. You just can't walk out there, hey, I don't know anything, and the gold's just gonna jump out of the ground and into your hand. Doesn't work like that. It's a skill. Finding gold is, is uh, something that takes knowledge and takes effort to learn. And in order to help people to learn more about how to find gold, I wrote a book. It's called Fistful of Gold because, hey, I want you to go out and find some fistfuls of gold. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold. And I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself this full of gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, 
the color would have cost me a lot more to have printed and so the book would have cost a lot more it's for sale on amazon and you can pick it up i'll put a link in the description below i also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine it's icmj's prospecting and mining journal and honestly you should check that out we've got stories uh, and information legal stuff everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector i write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well so check the magazine out also i have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com i'll put a link for it in the description below but there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts finally i want to say that i really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism don't come on there and just toss out insults because i'll just delete your comments but if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask do write and and put those in the comments because i answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in you know in, in responding to you uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more well then sign up subscribe and hit the uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos and you know like it and share it if again you, you see stuff that you really are excited about and I'll be coming out with lots more new videos and so we'll see you again real soon